question. List the best questions for a retiring teacher. Chat GPT-1. What inspired you to become a teacher, and how did your passion for education evolve throughout your career? What inspired me to become a teacher was getting involved with radio, interviewing bands, having my own thing going on, and then being asked to produce a community access program that involved training people who came in, how to go out and do interviews and do recordings and come back and edit them in a way that they would be broadcast. I found that immensely satisfying and putting on getting somebody from knowing nothing to up and running was something that I really, really enjoyed. Has my passion for education evolved throughout my career? I, th I think, it, uh, yeah, it has. In some ways, I think my passion for education has grown throughout my life because I, I really think it's the solution to all of the world's problems. If people are educated well, intelligently, thoughtfully, on how to yeah, cooperate, how to be useful, how to be able to tolerate difference. There's hundreds of things that could be embedded in a great education system, which is not what I think we have at the moment, but uh, certainly my passion for education has grown but my ability to do what I want to do in the system that we've got has shrunk. Two, looking back on your teaching career, what are some of the most memorable moments or experiences that stand out to you? Oh, that's always about the first time with a, a new setup. I mean, I went from being a freelance radio producer to being a radio production trainer in the early 90s. I couldn't I couldn't imagine speaking to a group of people from from scratch who just arrived in the room it was really beyond me for some time and I helped out on somebody else's workshop helping out people just doing editing one to one support to kind of warm into it and it gradually started with a group of like six or something and then built up to my first academic job at the University of East London and I remember the first time I sat down in front of 16 fresh-faced new first-year media production students and they were my class for six weeks and that was very very frightening and kind of thrilling that I had I had this opportunity to work out what kind of teacher I wanted to be and how I, how I could pass on my skills that was really it was a really great job for a long time that as well and I had a really great formula of how to teach radio production that took people from nothing to pretty pleased with the professional sounding production quite quickly so um, that that was one really starting at the University of East London same again at, at Brighton when I switched to video and I got the hang of that I just found it very satisfying passing on skills that other people can pick up and use and it's not really any great highs in it it's more of a continuum uh, it has gone down in recent years because the jobs that I've had have not given me the opportunity to develop it in the same way but I still like passing the skills on and seeing people be creative so that's the main thing. Free. What are some of the biggest changes you've seen in the education system since you first started teaching, and how have you adapted to those changes? Well, in the last 20 years, the biggest change is that it's bum all about bums on seats now, how the money comes in. So it's very difficult to take a student off a course once they're on. <clears throat> it's very difficult to fail anybody. And I feel like that is a bit of a sticky wicket that's being created within education. Um, I think also, you know, students are aware how much money is being spent on things and that there's no guarantee of a job at the end of it. I think that's a big change and I'm, I'm not sure what the answer to that is. I think we turn out <clears throat> way more media production students than there are jobs 
But I'd like to think that the kind of teaching I do <coughs> gives people transferable skills that they can use in anything. All right, how have I adapted to those changes? Um, I haven't adapted to those changes. I think learning how to take personal responsibility, work effectively in a group, uh, maintain a sense of humour under pressure, think critically, record things properly, ask open questions, do research. All, all of the basic components of media production are essentially the same, whatever kit's changed and whatever's gone on in the changes in our times. So the only thing that I've changed in my teaching is that I keep my finger on the pulse of what's going on with some technological changes and current affairs, so I keep it fresh, fresh examples. Four. What advice would you give to new teachers just starting out in the profession, based on your own experiences? Probably don't do it, be my advice these days, unless you really, really desperately love it. And I mean, if, if knowing what I know now, if it was me now starting again, the advice I'd give myself is don't do it. <coughs> Having said that, I think the basic pleasure of teaching hasn't changed but the amount of admin has changed so you have to be really good at lots of things to be a good teacher and make friends with spreadsheets and um, do jump through a lot of admin hoops which if you're not naturally good at can be really difficult in some ways it's more important to be better at the admin than the frontline teaching these days and if you're in higher education, you've got to add a research profile and all the other stuff on top of that. So it's, it's a lot of thing, a lot of plates to spin to be a teacher these days. But I, as, as a practical media production teacher, I've always managed to do pretty much what I like and not much else. So that's been a success. Five. What do you think is the most important quality for a teacher to possess, and how have you worked to cultivate that quality in yourself? Well, being patient. I think is a very important quality and I've had to do that a lot in, especially in recent years teaching um, I don't want to say lower levels teaching like level one, level two level three that has involved a lot of patience uh, teaching people generally who aren't really that bothered about being taught which is quite a lot of people who do media production do it because they can't think of what else to do that's, that involves a lot of patience, but it doesn't mean they're not going to jump on board and take to it later if they get um, inspired. Uh, being organised is super, super important, and I generally am way ahead of myself in my organisation, but I've also been in jobs where I haven't had the information to be as organised as I'd like to be. So that I found that difficult. Six. How have you seen your students change over the years, and what do you think are some of the biggest challenges facing young people today? I've got film students who don't watch films, and journalists who don't take notes. I find that a worrying development. There's something that's happened that's around attention span, and an understanding of process and what, and what a craft is that is really gone from this generation, the TikTok generation, the bit of everything generation. They know a lot about, a little, a little bit about a lot, but not a lot about anything in particular and expect a lot, a lot, and expect a lot for not doing that much, really. I think it's a really big surprise to them once they get into media production, how much effort it takes to make something look great, sound great and be compelling um, I'm not an anti-TikTok person but I do think it is potentially the end of literacy and journalistic students who who really don't understand the point of taking notes I, I, I don't understand how that's happened and film students who don't watch films because they're too long that does not seem good but um, Something always comes out of everything, so there'll be an upside to it as well. Seven, looking back on your career, what accomplishments are you most proud of and why? I feel like I've always looked after my students. 
and I feel like I have always I don't I don't quit on people so I feel like I've always helped people get over their hurdles obstacles to kind of step into themselves and their own power and capabilities that's that's it really eight what impact do you hope to have had on your students both in terms of their academic achievement and their personal growth well in both of those cases which is sort of the same thing really i think it's all about being able to get out of the comfort zone do something difficult put a lot of effort in and feel proud of themselves afterwards as it is the same for me um yeah if anybody who's been in my class feels more equipped to deal with uh, professional or personal life then i've done something useful nine what do you plan to do in retirement and how do you see yourself continuing to make a positive impact on the world i've no idea how i'll continue if i am making a positive contribution to the world However, voluntary work is definitely in my sights, so that might be one way that I continue to be of service in some way. I don't know if I am retiring. It feels like I'm retiring, but I may not be. I feel like I'm stepping away from frontline teaching for some time, and I may never come back to it. Um, and my intention is to go travelling and float free like a dandelion clock in the wind, see where I end up, see what's out there in the world, see what inspires me, see where it takes me. 10. Finally, what message would you like to share with your colleagues and former students as you embark on this new chapter in your life? Uh, I would like to say thank you very much for putting up with me. If I've ever upset you or annoyed you, I apologise for that. It has always been in the spirit of making things be the best that they can be and me wanting to be the best that I can be to help other people be their best. So thanks for putting up with me and if I have in any way supported you in being better at what you wanted to do, then yay.